I'm ready to jump out a window when I hear that fucking song. That was an album that we couldn't have in our house. My mom was real religious, Catholic, Saints in Hell, plus just the band Judas Priest. Forget it. Had to keep that shit out. I had that album in the fucking house. Nobody fucking kid. I just imposed my satanic will on those cocksuckers. No. Yeah, well, you know. No, no, no. I, I like this album. Well, no, I don't like this. Yeah, I well, it, was, this it wasn't I, red I, hot, I, white heat. With yeah, it, but it, a bunch of shit. The production wasn't great. <coughs> those albums in the seventies, you know, when they uh, when the live album, the, the the when when they put the live album out, the shit sounded so much better. Fog Hat Live, phenomenal. Fog, phenomenal. Judas Priest, Unleashed in the East, phenomenal. Ted Nugent, Double Live, Gonzo, phenomenal. Uh, UFO, Strangers in the Night, the best. You know what I mean? So all those live albums, and Peter Frampton comes alive. They just sounded better. I don't know if they could they could get the the right sound or something. But then you know, not that album sounded shitty in the seventies, but it just for some reason that it really sounded dirty. Which one? That stained class. Oh yeah, I know dirty, it did, and I kind of like it. Yeah, that ACDC, uh, uh, let that be rock. Fucking dirty album. Yeah, you know? yeah. Power Rage is half dirty, but right. let that be rock. I think they wanted it to be fucking. That dirty. was one out. If you want blood, you got it. Yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. didn't sound that much different than the record. Right. No. That wasn't like a classic live album. No, nobody. That I was, forgot about it till about three weeks. Yeah, ago. right. It's like yeah, it's all yeah, right. I you know, because you, you don't want to like the the Jack the live song is better because the dirty lyrics that Bond had different lyrics for the live version about a chick giving him clap. But um, other than that, I was, it's not a great live album. But most of those seventies live albums were fucking phenomenal. Phenomenal. Neil, Neil Young and Crazy Horse put out one, didn't they? Was it live? Uh, it's never sleep. Something like that. Something yeah, it wasn't a. Would they adjust the vocals for that, or would they? Would it just be like whatever they sang live is what you got on the album? I don't know. It was Skinner, one more for the road. I mean, that was a f- double live album, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I don't know how they did. It. I, I read something in the Keith Richards book where he said that they forgot how to wire how to do those things. That's why you don't hear live music anymore. They forgot how to actually, technology got too ahead of itself. Probably. And they can't, something weird. If you read his book, I think towards the end, there was a pretty, really good explanation on what was going on. I I thought it was just an old guy like me talking shit about, you know, society today, but it makes sense. They wired everything different. They mic'd it. That's the word I'm using for. They mic'd it different. They mic'd it differently. And these guys did the crossover never really, you know, never really, I don't know. Because by, by the time the 80s came out, no one really cared about live records. For me, when a, li- a band put out a live record, I'm like, eh, whatever. It didn't sound that much different than, you know, Iron Maiden Live After Death, Motorhead No Sleep Till Hammersmith. Black Sabbath Live Evil. Speak of the Devil was great because that was Ozzy doing the old Black Sabbath songs and Rudy played that on there. That was the Palladium, right? The yeah, that was the Palladium. Two nights, the Palladium. Jesus Christ. That, that was a long... I remember having that, like, cassette. Yeah. In, in Ozzy had that shit, that, 80, like, jello coming out of his mouth. like that. Did I have a cassette? Yeah, I probably have a cassette to that because I had He had some had blue, purple, like, jam coming out of his mouth, open his mouth. I used to go to the Palladium to disco dance back in the day. Like really? 82, my friends would go over and I'd go over there with them. Then one day they turned into Club MTV. And I was like, that's it. What happened? But I was living in <laughs> Snowmass, reading the fucking album cover, the live Speak of the Devil, whatever, that double album. And when I saw the play, I'm like, what are you talking about? But in those days, those clubs doubled and tripled. Because I went to see the B-52s, like the Ritz. Like in 81, 80. Right. That's when those bars were like during the week there was something else. And long fucking time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, they just did like two shows there. You know what happened was uh, Sharon and, and Ozzy were feuding with Black Sabbath at the time. You know, when Ronnie was with the, in the band and they had the two different bands going out, Black Sabbath and Ozzy Solo. And they caught wind that Black Sabbath was doing the live Evil record and we're going to put a live album out. So Sharon goes, you know what? Fuck them. Let's put an album out, live album out before them. So they had like two weeks to record an album and did all old Black Sabbath songs. And Randy didn't want to do those songs. Randy Rhodes was still in the band alive at the time. He's like, I don't want to. I'm already playing like three Black Sabbath songs live. Rudy tells the story in his book. He's like, I don't want to play all old Black Sabbath songs on a record. He almost quit the band over it. Him and Ozzy had a big falling out over it. And Randy's like, fine, I'm going to do it. I'm, I got one more album after this, and then I'm going to leave the band. 
but he didn't want it to, but they they rushed that album out that they wanted to get it out before the black sabbath live out live evil album and that's the only reason they never did any of those songs like live the wizard and all that stuff they never did ozzy solo never did that but they just did that to fuck sabbath before whatever live album was coming out <laughs> ton of shit <laughs> and how you remember this stuff is I, it's, 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 I know there's no reason I should remember that now I do the same thing <laughs> there's no reason I'll never forget I was dating this girl it had to be 1986 she's young I'm young and we're at her parents house and a bunch of family people there a bunch of neighbors I'm the only one from Jersey there and I had been there like once or twice before and this one time I'm there and the dad thought he was Johnny Intelligent he was from, like, fucking some hellhole in New York. He moved to Colorado, got a pair of glasses, started reading on his balcony. All of a sudden, he's fucking Johnny Intelligent. And I said something one day. He goes, you know what, man? You have a fucking great mind to retain useful, useless information. And I was like, I know that. <laughs> like that was, I didn't know whether it was a compliment or a fucking... Uh, I like all that trivia shit, too. A lot of people don't. I don't like it too much... There's some people go a little fucking overboard with it. That's too crazy for me. I like to keep it light. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to know what his dog's name is. It's like in that movie with Marky Wahlberg, when he sees the guy from that was supposedly Judas Priest, the guitar player. Yeah, rock star, yeah. He's like, I sent you a card when your dog died. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. You know, there's people that are that nice that you open up the car and go, my dog, what, what the fuck is wrong with you? Go get a life. But there's people that are that nice. That people from Jersey like me, I can't comprehend sometimes. <laughs> like, if somebody's too fucking nice, I can't take it. Like, there's some Americans that are really just that nice. And guys like me, I can't understand. They, they, they want to suck my dick. Gotta, so, yeah, there's something. Yeah, absolutely. There's always something. You know what I'm saying? There's some people who are nice, but you can see they got edge to them. I, I don't mind those people. Because <laughs> I know they have, like, fucking uh, faults. But then there's people that are just perfect. They're nice people. They always, I'm, well, I'll help you move. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll bring the truck. I'll pay for you. Like, hey, come on, knock it off. Like, they're just too nice. Like, you're waiting for the fucking left hand to come. But the left hand never comes, so you always make a bad judgment call. And then you feel like you got to, now you owe him a favor. Like a fucking dick, yeah. Well, then also you got to, you feel like you owe him a favor now. No, I don't mind doing that. I don't mind. That's, that's part of the give and go. It's part of yeah. having friends, you know. Uh, I, I can't help you fucking move. You're in no danger. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a ride to the airport. <laughs> he'll, come, he'll come, he'll come over with some yeah. weed during your move. It's got to be know. something sitting down. You know, I'm, <laughs> something sitting down. I can't, I'm not going to lift couches. Two fucking stories. I can't do that no more. You know, you, you, Joe. You were talking earlier. You brought up like you went and, and like went to disco dance. Can you like talk about? You've never talked about that. I, it wasn't disco anymore. But it was, it was, it's not like the thing with the hand. No, 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 no. We're going in like fucking Marie. Do you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.